Hi, I'm Ashley. I go to UW-Madison. Today we're in the UW Makerspace and this is DigiKey's Summer Break Edition. Today I'm making the NeoPixel Storm. What you're going to need is either a bristle board or cardboard that's about the size of your canvas but a little bit smaller, some NeoPixels, power supply, a USB cord that can also transfer data, not just charge, a female power adapter, the Circuit Playground Express, one diode, uh, soldering station equipment, and then a couple other general tools. So the first thing you're going to need to do is sketch out where you want your NeoPixels on the board. So based on my picture, I'm just going to sketch out a couple rectangles about how long I want these strands to be cut. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to show a general idea. The next thing you want to do is measure out the length of NeoPixel that you want on your board. So I need it to be about that long, so I'm just going to take, I'm just using some wire cutters and cutting through on the little soldering pads. Line it up, it's about the right length. Next you're going to want to place your Circuit Playground Express onto the board and just give a general outline of where it's going to be because you're going to need to be measuring wire length. Next I'm going to take my packaging tape so that way I can tape my NeoPixels flat to the board. Then we're going to start adding wires. We're going to take a good length of this red wire and just cut it. And you want to make sure that it's long enough that all three of these components are going to be able to attach to it. Then we're going to take the wire strippers and just strip off a little bit so we can use the scent to solder. We're also going to need to strip off a little bit extra over here just to make the soldering process a little bit easier. We're also going to cut another black wire that's approximately the same length as that red wire that we just cut. Then we're going to strip the end the same way. And this is going to be connecting to the black wire that's coming out of the NeoPixel strand. When you're soldering, you're going to need to take your diode and you're going to be soldering it onto this main red wire. And you're going to make sure there's going to be a little gray strip on it. You want to make sure that's facing away from the power supply. That's very important. This diode is going to create a 0.7 volt uh, voltage drop, which is going to keep any of the components from being harmed. To make it easier to differentiate which wire goes to which pad, I decided to use different colors. Now that we're done with all the soldering, it's time to code. First thing you're going to need to do is go on to arduino.cc and just download the software. So if you go to the software tab, click on downloads, and then follow the steps for if you have a Mac, Windows, etc. So now we're going to go on to the Ever Burning Flame project on Adafruit and we're going to go down and follow the code. You can just download it and then with your software, make sure you have this hooked up using your USB and you should be able to install it pretty easily. Then when it's working, you should be able to take your capacitive touch sensor and it should light right up. And you should be able to touch it again and it should turn off. If you're having any difficulties, it's really important that you check that you're actually uploading the code to the correct tool. So if you go under Tools, Port, it should give you the option to select Adafruit Circuit Playground. Another note, that's Board. Um, you have to select Adafruit Circuit Playground on that as well, although it should already be selected. It's also really important that you install the Fast LED library if you haven't done that already. That will be under Sketch, and then Include Library, Manage Libraries, Another screen will pop up, and in the search bar, you just need to type in Fast LED, and an option will click up, and I have already have it installed, and it tells me that, otherwise it'll give you an option to install it if you haven't yet. So you actually have the ability to customize your code. In here, you should look for a comment that says, choose your color palette. Uh, what's really nice is with Fast LED, when you installed that library, it came with a couple color palettes already pre-installed. So here they ha naturally have heat colors for fire. I used in my ocean, I have a storm with an ocean, I used ocean colors, that was really helpful. Um, otherwise, if you want to customize your own color palette, that's really easy. 
I would just look up how to do that online. If you just look up color palettes C++, you'll find um, easy tutorials on how to do that. So now it's time for us to add the DC power adapter onto the board. This will allow us to connect the power supply to it. First, we're gonna take the stripped end of this main red wire. We're gonna just kind of form it into a little ball. Then we're gonna put it into the positive end of the adapter. Then just make sure that you have it tightened. Give it a good tug, make sure it won't fall out. And we're gonna do the same thing with the black wire, except this one's gonna go into the negative terminal. All right, check it out, it's pretty good. Now it's time to bring out your painting. So I've already installed the touch button. That's this little metal piece down here. You can use anything as long as it's metal. To make it work, all you need to do is solder on a short piece of wire to the back. Then you're gonna thread that piece of wire through your canvas. You might need to make a little hole to make it a little bit easier for you. Then you'll take that remaining wire through the canvas and solder it to this capacitive touch wire that we used earlier to test out our LEDs. Then you just need to staple it to the back of the board and you're all done. Now it's time to find a gallery to hang my masterpiece.